Greetings, everyone, and welcome to 32 Manias of Mike. Oh, man, we are... We're at WrestleMania 15, you guys. WrestleMania 15. And I got it wrong the last time. It was not in Detroit. I couldn't remember who this one was. I didn't even know Philly hosted a WrestleMania. I didn't know this. I didn't think they'd have two East Coast Manias in a row. Uh, not, not in the Attitude Era, anyway. But uh, here we are. We're in Philly. Um, Boys to Men opened the show with America the Beautiful. Very nice rendition. Very, very nice. Uh, we haven't had that in a while. Not since WrestleMania 11 uh, that I can remember. I would have talked about it, but yeah. Uh, looks like they'll be getting back to that, which is good. But uh, this is a WrestleMania first because this is the first WrestleMania that has Sunday Night Heat before it. Yeah, a little Sunday Night Heat action. And a Sunday Night Heat that matters because there might have been one in 98. I'm not positive. But it wasn't showing up on the Wikipedia. They didn't talk about it on the show. So I'm assuming Sunday Night Heat was just like maybe the half-hour pre-show type of thing. But this Sunday Night Heat mattered. Uh, not the Jacqueline versus Ivory match, although maybe a little bit. We'll get into why that could have mattered a little bit later. But there was a huge battle royal to determine the, um, the number one t contenders for the Tag Team Championships that night. I don't exactly remember the reason. I think it was supposed to be um, a team that uh, was injured or something like that. I forget exactly what the circumstances were. might have been LOD. I'm not positive. But um, there was a huge Battle Royal, and I found all the participants in the Battle Royal. The way this worked, it was a 20-man Battle Royal, and... Um, it looks like the last two guys that were in the ring were going to be um, the, the two guys going for the belts, which is really, really interesting. Um, so <laughs> uh, let me just break down the guys that were in this match. It's very, very weird. Uh, okay, this is going to read like, a uh, who's who of what the fuck. But Rocco Rock, Johnny Grunge, Viscera, Gilbert, Animal. Okay, so maybe it wasn't LOD then. Uh, Eight Ball, Skull, Hawk, Scott Taylor, Farouk, Tiger Ali Singh, Matt and Jeff Hardy, Midian, Brian Christopher, Steve Blackman, Bradshaw, The Godfather, Draws, and the two winners, Test. And D'Lo Brown. Yeah, so Test and D'Lo Brown were going to be going up against uh, the tag team champions Owen Hart and Jeff Jarrett. Very weird. Very weird. I Again, I don't know why this occurred. I don't know why. I mean, it, maybe it was to make Sunday Night Heat important. It's an interesting concept. I actually I don't know if I would mind them doing this again. Like the last two guys in the ring have steam up. It sounds pretty cool. I, I mean, we probably couldn't do it now with a limited roster, but you know, why not? Um, so basically, let's jump into the show. The show opens, opens with another new championship, the hardcore championship, you guys. Oh man, you all you all know the hardcore championship. You know and love the hardcore championship. This is a weird. I'm get, I'm great. Before I get into the match, this is a weird mania. It's a weird mania. It's it's not a bad mania. There's not really a bad match on the card. It's just really weird. It's a it's an odd mania, and I don't exactly get it. But here we are. Um, so, the first match on the card. Again, this is a weird time for DX. Every member of DX was in a singles match. And three of them were in title matches. And none of them were Triple H. So, yeah. Like I said, really weird mania. Um, so, the champion, the hardcore champion is badass Billy Gunn, and he's in a triple threat match against 
debut, uh, not debuting, he's been in WrestleMania before, Hardcore Holly, and Al Snow making his WrestleMania debut. Al Snow in Philly, you know that's going to be a good sign. Uh, the Philly fans loved Al Snow. Like uh, like no one's business. And it was a fun match. You know, hardcore championship matches, especially triple threat ones. You guys know they can get a little sloppy. They can get a little rough. This one actually was paced pretty decently, probably because Billy Gunn wasn't exactly the greatest hardcore champion of all time. He wasn't. I mean, I know Road Dog held the hardcore title for a while, and I think held it better, if I recall correctly. But uh, yeah, Billy Gunn went went in and uh, Hardcore Holly got his belt back. Hardcore Holly and Al Snow were the ones that were having the feud. Basically, they were the ones that were feuding together. But uh, Hardcore Holly did get the belt back, and uh, yeah, n- nice little hardcore match. Definitely not the clusterfuck we're gonna see in uh, next installment of WrestleMania. <laughs> if you don't remember that one, oh boy, I do. And wow, that it's a, it's fun. Uh, but moving along, tag title match. Owen Hart, Jeff Jarrett, with Miss Deborah at their side, going up against the makeshift team of Test and D'Lo Brown. And D'Lo Brown is coming to the ring with Ivory, so uh, there, there's there's a little bit there's a little bit of issues there, especially with the whole PMS thing going on. But um, Test and D'Lo can't really get it together. Uh, and they, they lose fairly quickly, Owen. It's only like a f- Owen and Jeff. It's only like a four man match. But uh I don't know. I guess I guess this is just not a time to really be focusing on tag teams. As you'll see later, like it's a lot about the corporation. And if you're not involved with the cor- in the corporation storyline, you almost don't matter in this WrestleMania. Sad but true. Sad but true. Now <laughs> Oh, this match coming up. This match actually has a friend of the show in it. Believe it or not. A friend of the Wrestling Mayhem show. It is the Brawl for All match. That's right. If you don't know what Brawl for All is, back in the late 90s, WWF decided, hey, you know what? UFC is starting to get really popular. Let's see if we can do a UFC-style tournament. And what they did was they assigned points to takedowns, knockdowns, knockouts, things like that. And they grabbed a lot of a bunch of their heaviest hitters, like guys like Dr. Death Steve Williams, um, The Godfather. Bradshaw was in it, I think. Uh, I want to say Tiger Ali Singh was in there. Bart Gunn. There were a few other guys. few of the guys that are known, notorious for being heavy, heavy strikers. And Bart Gunn ran rough shot. Ran rough shot through all the guys. Like, and it was a surprise. That he did that. Mark Merrow, I think, was in it too. Bark Gun knocked out everyone. Bark Gun was ridiculous. So, you know, in, in the typical tradition of WrestleMania, let's get a celebrity in here. So, Bark Gun was up against friend of the show, Butterbean. Now, if you don't recall when Butterbean was on the show, I actually had to look this up on Wrestling Man Show Archives. You got to go all the way back. To June 22nd, 2010. 2010. Seven years ago, this guy was on our show. Uh, I'm I'm sure we talked about the Brawl for All. Because uh, Butterbean, well, he kind of destroys Bart Gunn. And by kind of, I mean it's painful to watch. <laughs> it's, it's real. Actually, 2010 might be the last time I saw this match in order to prepare for Butterbean. But yeah. Oh my god, just and the ring looks really good. Like they set it all up. I think it took longer for them to set up the ring than the match actually took. But yeah, uh Barbie and Bark Gun. You gotta watch it. It's great. Uh especially if you don't like Bark Gun. But moving along, now we get into kind of the the meat of this WrestleMania sandwich. Uh Mankind is going up against WrestleMania debut of the Big Show. Now, the gimmick for this match is that the winner becomes the special guest referee in the May event, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock. Uh, now, Big Show, hired gun by Vince McMahon. Hired gun. By the way, 
technically the WrestleMania debut of Mr. McMahon. We've seen Vince McMahon on WrestleMania, but not Mr. McMahon. Yes, there is a distinction. Trust me. I work there. You have to know the distinction. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, Big Show just pummels the crap out of mankind. Just, I mean, Foley gets, Foley gets some shots in. But, you know, it's a pretty one-sided match. And everything looks like it's going right for the corporation until Big Show gets a little, um, a little overzealous. And he gets himself disqualified by choke slamming mankind through two chairs. You know, as one does. But um so Vin- this brings out Mr. McMahon, and he's really not too jacked about this. And he, you know, he starts getting in the face of the big show. Big show grabs him by the throat and looks like he's about to choke slam him. And, you know, then just then just calms down. He's like, Nope, 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 this is the boss. It's the boss, it's fine. And Vince was like yeah, that's right. You put me down. He started pointing at him. And finally, Mr. McMahon crossed the line, slaps Big Show in the face. Big Show then knocks him out. <laughs> so, yeah. And Big Show gets arrested for assault. And we don't see Big Show again for the rest of the show. But still, cool WrestleMania debut. Not bad. He lost. But you'll see later down the line, Big Show has a habit of losing at WrestleMania. He has a habit of it. Someone... Someone you might remember brings it up a lot. I, I remember this specifically because I love this angle. But yeah. Uh, so moving along, we actually have not my favorite match on the show, but it's it, it was definitely an interesting match. I really enjoyed it. It's a four corners elimination match for the Aaron Continental title. You got the champion, the road dog, Jesse James. Yeah. Versus Ken Shamrock. Versus Val Venus. Versus Goldust. Accompanied by the Blue Meanie. And Ryan Shamrock. Ken Shamrock's younger sister. It's a weird match. Uh, One of the weirdest things about this match. Is that apparently there was a coin toss backstage. To see who would start the match. We need to bring this back. I'm dead serious. Next time there's a. There's a there's a four corners match or something like that where you have to tag in and out. We need to bring this concept back. I want to see it again. It was a cool way to decide who's starting the match. It was it was very cool. I just liked it. But um, Road Dog actually retains. Uh, it, it was good. The feud. There's several ongoing feuds. Road Dog is not really involved in any of the feuds here, which is weird. I'd I'd like to see the build for this match again. Because kind of like Billy Gunn, it, it's almost like this WrestleMania didn't know what to do with the New Age Outlaws. And I remember thinking that when I saw it, too, because DX, as I said, is in a real weird place right now. It's in a real weird place. But uh, uh, Val Venus and, and Ken Shamrock both get counted out. Because they're brawling, because Val Venus used to date Ken's sister, you know, blah 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 blah. You know that, you know how that kind of stuff goes. Plus, Ken Shamrock, not exactly the most stable guy in the world. Then, um, Road Dog gets the win over Goldust. You know, pretty standard stuff. Now, here's where WrestleMania gets a little confusing for me. We have Kane with China at ringside, going up against Triple H. Um, now the story here is that China defected to the corporation. She was basically like Kane's handler. And then Kane accidentally shot China in the face with a fireball because Triple H ducked. So it's kind of hard to tell who the, because then Triple H came back with a giant flamethrower and shot Kane in the face with fire. So it's kind of weird to see who's the face, who's the heel in this. Triple H is the face, but he's acting like a heel. More on that later. Uh, But yeah, Kane and Kane. Kane and Triple H have a good match. They've always had good matches together. But this is the first in a long line of Kane should never trust Triple H when there's women around. You know, China, Katie Vick. AJ probably at some point down the down the line, yeah, just shouldn't happen. Just shouldn't happen. Lita, 
I don't think Triple H is involved with that, but still, Kane and ladies in wrestling does not work. It just doesn't. But yeah, um, so China came back to Triple H's side, hit Kane with a low blow, and Kane wins by disqualification, but in the process gets his ass beat. So China is back with DX. Yay! Rejoicing! Rejoicing! Okay, now, moving on. We have a resurgence, a match for the Women's Championship back on WrestleMania. It's been a while. It's been since uh, WrestleMania 10 with Alundra Blaze, I believe. But yeah, um, the new Women's Champion is Sable. And this is a far different Sable than was at WrestleMania 14. Sable's the heel at this point. Uh, she's not quite at the, for all the men who come to see me and the women who want to be me level, but she's doing an odd grind, which did not look sexual at all. Uh, and now I know we had the women's championship. And it seems odd that on a on a Sunday night Heath had Jacqueline and Tori. I mean Jacqueline and Ivory. We get Sable going up against Tori. Now I'm not talking Tori Wilson. Tori Wilson in '98 is probably only 16. I'm talking Tori. T O R I. She's kind of like um. She's kind of like the beta version of Mickey James if Sable is the beta version of Trish Stratus. That was basically the premise for this storyline, but the roles were reversed. Like Sable's the heel and Tori is the face. Tori, if you don't remember her, you'll most likely remember her because she accompanied Kane later down the line. She was DX Tori, but this is before she joined DX. So if that if that makes it clearer than that, then I'm glad that helps. But uh, and we have to talk about this. It's not a good match. It's not. I, Sable Sable tries. Tori tries. They do their best. But on you have Jackie and Ivory. I mean, come on, guys. Let's get it together. Let's get it together. They should have been on WrestleMania. Hell, make it a triple threat. I'm okay with that. But, um, yeah, Sable wins. But uh, Tori's ring attire. I'm not sure if she was inspired by Giant Gonzalez, but it's a giant onesie that's airbrushed, and it does not look flattering at all. She looks like what you thought the cats from the play Cats looked like when you were a kid. Yeah, it, it's not it's not a flattering look at all. It's the women have come a long way, is what I'm saying. But yeah, all right. So moving along, here we go. Another very confusing match. It's for the European Championship. Now the European Champion is our boy Shane O'Mac, Shane McMahon, still with the corporation. Doesn't have his own theme music yet. He's accompanied to the ring by Test. The Mean Street Posse is sitting ringside, and he's going up against X-Pac. Now, X-Pac, you know, right with DX, DX is back together. The band is back together, as it were. And as soon as X-Pac comes out, he gets jumped by Paris and Briscoe. Beats him down. He gets jumped by a Mean Street Posse. Beats him down. Gets jumped by Test. Beats him down. And then Triple H and China come out to try and even the odds. And Triple H and China screw over Xbox. They screw over Xbox. Low blow. Shane McMahon wins. And Triple H and China bull like China did a double turn on this show. She was a heel with the Kane storyline. Turned face by joining Triple H, but then convinced Triple H. To join to turn heel and go to the corporation. Like I said, it's a very confusing WrestleMania. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. I can't think of it offhand, but there had to have been an easier way to do this. But yeah, uh, so Triple H and, and China and Test help out Shane. 
and Shane leaves WrestleMania with the European Championship. Go figure. All right, now, <laughs> moving along, this is, I'm going to say, one of the most forgettable Undertaker matches he's ever had at WrestleMania, mainly because of the ending, because of the finish. Uh, again, this is another corporation storyline, but it's the Ministry of Darkness, but we don't get much ministry with it. We get a little bit, a little bit, teeny little bit at the end, but it's the it's a WrestleMania first, the first ever Hell in a Cell match at WrestleMania, and it's the Undertaker versus the Big Boss Man, the corporation's hired gun. Why this wasn't Big Show? I'll never know, because that would be something I'd like to see. But um, Taker and Big Show, you know, it's a fun match. They have a, they have a real they have a really decent match. Big Show, uh, Big Boss Man uses his nightstick a lot. But Taker, you know, guess who wins? Taker wins. Of course he does. It's WrestleMania. Um, and after the match, we see three little three little birdies. Drop on top of the cell. And that is the debut of Edge and Christian at WrestleMania, everyone. They're in the brood. The brood was part of the ministry at the time. And they probably could have had a more auspicious debut because they actually drop a noose down for the Undertaker. <laughs> yeah, and the Undertaker kind of hangs Big Boss Man. It's very weird. Um, th There's a reason they don't talk about this one much in Taker's long lineage of, of WrestleMania stuff. But yeah. It happened. It was a thing. Th this WrestleMania is kind of built on one match, and that match is the main event. It's the one we're going to talk about right now. It's a no disqualification match for the WWF Championship. Stone Cold Steve Austin going up against the corporate champion, The Rock. Now, um, on 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 WrestleMania 14, I said it was the end of Shawn Michaels for a while, and you know what? I thought I was right. Turns out I was wrong. Because Vince McMahon said that he would come out and guest referee because Mankind's off of the hospital, Big Show's off in jail, and Vince comes down to referee, and then all of a sudden you hear Shawn Michaels' theme music because I forgot he's the commissioner and he's a face. So Shawn Michaels comes out and says, Vince McMahon, you're not refereeing this match. Corporation's barred from ringside and just brings out Mike Chioda. So all's white with the world. Until um, the match starts... Austin and Rock just beat the crap out of each other because no DQ and by definition no count out, I think. But yeah, they just go all over the place. They beat the crap out of each other. It's Philly, so they treat it like an ECW match almost. And uh, Austin accidentally smashes Mike Kyoto in the head of a chair and really blasts him. It's not pretty. <laughs> it's not at all. But guess what? We need our referee out here. Here comes good old Tim White. Tim White comes out. Austin and Rock still beating each other up. Austin takes several tries to put Rock through the Spanish announce table because, of course, he does. And Rock hits a rock bottom. One, two, kick out. Rock gets pissed. Rock bottoms Tim White. <laughs> These guys are just taking out referees. It's amazing. Um, Earl Hebner comes running out. Earl also gets knocked out. I forget how. I forget how he gets knocked out, but he gets knocked out too. So, finally... Vince McMahon comes out and they start stomping away on Austin. You know, they're, they're, you know, there's no referee, but Vince is still, it's no DQ, so he can do whatever he wants. And then Mankind runs back out, back from the hospital in his striped shirt. And um, he stops Vince McMahon. Then Austin and Rock have the, the finish of their match. And it, it's pretty good. There's reversals of stunners, there's dodging of rock bottoms, there's dodging of people's elbows. And it ends, as you would expect, Stone Cold, flipping the bird, stunner, boom, one, two, three, Stone Cold is a two-time WrestleMania champion, two-time WWF champion. And the crowd goes crazy, and Austin drinks beers with Earl Hebner. Nice, nice moment. But yeah, uh, so that, whew, that's WrestleMania 15. It's a weird one. It's a really weird one, you guys. Very odd WrestleMania. Oh, and I did forget to mention, of course, I apologize. Um, before the Kane and Triple H match, Kane is assaulted by the San Diego chicken. 
Why is the San Diego chicken in Philadelphia? I have no explanation for that. However, the person under the costume is, of course, as you would expect, Pete Rose. <laughs> Pete Rose. Just goes just goes after and Kane Kane tombstones and again. Poor Pete. Poor poor Pete. Alrighty. So if there's anything that you guys want to talk about from WrestleMania 15, hit me up at Mad Mike4883 on the Twitter machine. Leave some comments in the YouTube below. And um hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on Twitter. Hit up the hashtag MM at Mayhem Show for uh letting me know what you think of this series. So um the next WrestleMania we're going to is, oddly enough, not WrestleMania 16. You would think it is because numbers, but no. We jump all the way to WrestleMania 2000. All right. It's still WrestleMania 16. It just happened to be in the year 2000. For those of you who are too young to know this, a lot of people were obsessed with things ending in 2000. A lot of people were. I don't know why. New Millennium, whatever. It's branding, it's marketing. I'm just going to call it WrestleMania 16. I'll probably lie and then put WrestleMania 2000 in the description because that's what everyone calls it. I think even on the network, it's called WrestleMania 2000. Hold on. Let me check real quick. But yeah, I think it's... WrestleMania 2000... Now... We'll get there after I, after I watch it again. But WrestleMania 2000 is one of those ones that I've seen dozens of times. And, oh, actually, they do call it WrestleMania 16. Good for you, WWE. Good for you. All right. So, I will see you guys at WrestleMania 16 in Anaheim, California. The Arrowhead Pond. This one, I, ask, I absolutely know where it is. All right. So, for Mad Mike, I'm Mad Mike. And this has been 32 Mania.